Hello and welcome to the Fit for Life programme from St Christopher. This is a series of videos helping you to look after your mind, body and spirit. If you haven't already watched the first video in this series, please do so. It introduces the course and talks about goal setting. Today, Vincent, our Head of Social Work, is going to be talking to us about staying connected. Hello, my name is Vincent Doherty and I work within St Christopher's patient and family support. I want to talk to you about the Fit for Life project, keeping connected, keeping safe and keeping supported. It's important at the times of um, we're living through at the minute that we keep connected and that there's a health implication on off loneliness and isolation. And it's really important that we address those issues and acknowledge those issues. Being lonely and isolated is as damaging as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. The need to keep in touch with others has never been more important. With all the COVID restrictions, it's been very, very difficult for people to keep um, in touch with loved ones, friends and families. There's a huge role for families to play in keeping people connected. Um, friends too. But the role of the local community shouldn't be minimised as well. The local community means churches, schools, um, luncheon clubs, having that confidence to pick up a phone and just make contact with somebody else is so good for your health and your well-being there's another role for major organizations like the nhs adult social care in keeping people connected all of those organizations now acknowledge that being mindful of the impact of loneliness and isolation is key to keeping fit and keeping connected. Asking for help is often very difficult for people to do. Um, it's not a um, reflection of how popular we are. As we get older, it's natural that we lose friends, that we lose contact, that our own children have their own lives to lead. And loneliness and isolation can creep up on us without us realizing. Um, the issue of contact with key people and loved ones is particularly pertinent at the minute because of the um, impact of the COVID restrictions. I'm talking to you now in, in mid-June 2020 and we've just about got shops open. Those of us that are shielding are still at home. Those of us that have got other health conditions are probably still um, learning to cope with dependency on others when we all actually want to be independent. But at certain times in our lives, there's a transition between being completely independent to being dependent on others while remaining independent in other areas. But for example, I'm aware the, the local Baptist church is picking up my prescriptions. They're also doing some of my shopping in a way that I would never have expected before. And that sense of being dependent on others can be very challenging for us to accept. Um, Keeping 
um, safe at home is important. Um, and keeping safe from unwanted scams is equally important. At the moment, um, we're absolutely um, in the middle of an unprecedented period of time where um, the use of, as we are today, IT using remote means of keeping in touch offers us great opportunities in a way we haven't had previously, but they also open up some threats. Um, for example, financial scams. And in general, in general, be it Martin Lewis, be it Bromley Safeguarding, Lewis and Croydon Southwark, if an offer sounds too good to be true, it usually is too good to be true. And sadly, in the way that society and functional society has had to adapt to COVID, so have scams um, and fraudsters. So when we're trying to keep safe at home, it's not just about balls and trips. It's about financial issues. It's also about making sure that we don't start self-neglecting incrementally. I talk to you as somebody who hasn't had a haircut in 14 weeks, and it becomes very, very easy when we're at home and we're not seeing people. It becomes very, very easy to slip into a pattern of not looking after ourselves. Why keep the place tidy if nobody's coming in? Why keep myself tidy if I'm not going out anywhere? And that issue of self-neglect is one way that um, keeping fit can be addressed. That if we keep ourselves washed, dressed, if we keep ourselves occupied, we all need structure in terms of activity at a certain time in a certain place. At the minute, the certain place are our homes. And what that is a challenge around is how do we ensure that our activities are maintained without it just becoming 24 seven Netflix or um, just sitting in a couch. To recap, keeping safe at home. Self-neglect can be very incremental in how it develops. And we need to be looking after ourselves when others aren't here to actually comment on, you need a haircut, you need a shower, you need a wash. Um, neglect from others, really important for those people that are receiving care from a domiciliary care agency or from a privately funded source. Um, that when there aren't people coming in to check because of social distancing, where the calls are being made, that it's very easy for us to accept because we're grateful for all types of support. It's easy for us to accept the unacceptable that people are turning up late. People aren't turning up. People are turning up in a, when one person is turning up, when we know that in order to safely move and to be safely handled, we need two people. And financial scams, where these fraudsters are taking advantage of the, uh, the COVID restrictions. Moving on now to keeping on top of plans. I would ask you, what's really important to you now? You've finished, most of you, most of the people I'm talking to now have probably finished um, some spell of care at St. Christopher's. So what's really important to you now? What's your priorities in life? And again, coming back to the COVID crisis, I think a lot of people 
have had time on their hands and have been really thinking about what's really important to you now. Is it your family? Is it your friends is it your house is it your garden is it having that conversation with somebody that you wish you'd had years ago is it about feeling more at peace and that might be through um, being able to say thank you sorry goodbye to people equally it might be about a faith or a lack of faith but do you feel comfortable with that? It's also, when, you, when it comes to keeping on top of plans, making plans so you get what you want. Um, and the future is almost by definition uncertain. And we're not quite sure what we're going to want in three months time or three years time and making sure particularly those of you and us that are are lonely and comparatively isolated making sure that others know what it is that we really want and there's a number of phrases that are used to describe what we call an advanced care plan but advanced care plans are not just about although there's been huge emphasis given to it they're not just about preferred place of death preferred place of care scenes of care do not attempt resuscitation advanced care plans are about who's important to you now and who do you want around you in the future i love the phrase what are your red lines about what you're not prepared to compromise on and what are the areas that you are willing to compromise so for example i would give the example of independence and dependency again that it might be that what you want to say is that i just really do not want to go into a care home um, as my needs and my illness progresses that i would rather remain at home and what what you're saying by making a statement like that is that you value your personal autonomy greater than your own personal sense of safety that you would rather be at home independent even if that means that you're not getting the suboptimal level of care, but you're absolutely clear that for you, it's important that you remain independent. And that's all recorded within what we call an advanced care plan. And an advanced care plan can can be very explicit in terms of advanced decisions to refuse treatment for example but the key aspect about keeping on top of plans is letting others know what you want for the future and letting others know where those plans actually are uh, so it's going to mean difficult conversations perhaps i've used the phrase challenging conversations at times but at least you'll have the reassurance of knowing that this is what's important for me now these are the people that are important to me now and they're going to be the, the, the people that are going to be important to me in the future keeping up with your support needs now i've used this phrase independence and dependency um, as I've shared with you, during the COVID um, shielding period of time, I've got used to complete strangers knocking at the door and providing support. And that's been quite a threat to my own sense of personal autonomy. But it is around 
accepting and seeing the positive aspects of dependency. Society as a whole sells us the, the, the dream of complete independence. And at certain times in our life, that's really important. At other times, we need to be more dependent on others. And there's a positive aspect to that. And that could be around your domiciliary care worker. It could be around your GP practice and, and um, district nurses. It could be around the person that picks up the phone every week to give you a call. Um, but that um, the, the balance between independence and dependencies, um, one that's on a continuum. You can get support either informally or formally. So informal support might be what your neighbours do, what your local church does, what your local Derby and Join uh, Club might offer. Um, you can also get support coming into your house informally. You can employ somebody. You can um, have informal arrangements about people doing shopping for you. And that, and there's a, most people actually um, have those informal support packages of care in place. The more formal route is by approaching your local authority and the role of adult social care, as I talked to you in June 2020, has um, really come to the fore with the COVID um, outbreak. The Department of Health has now become the Department of Health and Social Care. And for the first time, we really acknowledge the importance around the support in our own homes that people coming in provide. Now, the, the, the huge issue around getting support is how is it funded? The CARE Act dictates that a financial assessment has to take place of your means to fund the support. And in the main, if you've got savings above 23,000, you're going to have to fund your care completely. There's then a sliding scale from 23,000 down to roughly about 13, 14,000. Below 13, 14,000, the state will pay for the care that's coming into your, your house. There has been much debate over the equity, the fairness of that system. Um, and why should people that have been hardworking, being able to make savings, then be penalised by having to pay for their adult um, social care? Why is it that if you've got some illnesses, you don't have to pay for support? Whereas if you've got dementia, sadly, you have to pay for your support. So there are big financial implications about keeping up your support needs. What I would say to you though, is it's important that you don't ignore your support needs because you're worried about the financial cost of the care package. And care might be in, to, in relation to personal hygiene, it might be in relation to housekeeping, it might be in relation to shopping. So there's going to be paid care at home, but also consider the role of paid care outside of the home. For example, going to a day centre, or going to a lunch club, or going to a gym. Um, so keeping up with your support needs has a um, a benefit that goes far beyond just 
a package of care. It keeps you connected. It keeps the social aspects of your life um, in proper context. It also keeps you safe. The more people that we have contact with, the safer statistically we are. So this keeping up with your support needs aspect of keeping fit is absolutely key. Okay, so in summary, keeping fit for life has various um, elements to it. We advocate that you look at um, keeping fit in terms of how connected are you with others outside of your home? How safe are you within your home? How have you managed to keep fit by keeping on top of plans? For example, uh, wills, advanced care plans, ad, um, lasting powers of attorney, for example. And last but not least, how you can keep fit by ensuring that you're getting the support that your needs um, um, dictate at home and indeed outside of home. There are other opportunities for you to discuss your support needs by contacting the, uh, the hospice. Ask for either the social work team or the welfare rights team or indeed our colleagues in rehab. We've all got this generic aim of keeping people as independent and leading as good quality of life for as long as you possibly can. We're all working as one team towards that. Thank you for your time in listening to this quick presentation and I look forward to perhaps seeing you uh, and responding to any questions um, via my email address uh, v.doherty at stchristophers.org.uk or simply uh, bring up the hospice and a message will get through to either the social work or welfare teams and we'll get back to you. Thank you.